Hey everyone, hope everyone had a great Thursday and is ready, almost ready for the weekend. And we're back again to expose the most scary, delusional person out there, Christopher Mitchell, as well as more importantly, the lying sack of shit, uh, cyber terrorist, cyber stalker, uh, Todd Rutellis, and the ingrateful fat tub of lard, Lee Bradbury. And then we're doing the part two, carry on with the part two uh, interview from yesterday, last night's show. And before we dive into this, I want to uh, give me uh, some time to uh, explain some things, what's going on, and uh, expose the cyber terrorist, cyber stalker, full of shit, Todd would tell us some more. Now, he runs this, he uh, has this thread, and uh, it's been going on almost two years now, and it's uh, full of, uh, well, everyone's pretty much gone. The, uh, there's about eight people, nine people that post, about four or five of them are sheep that think Todd would tell us is a Mr. Know-it-all, but, and they're trying to, and it's all about Christopher Mitchell, trying to expose Christopher Mitchell, or talking all this shit, and, and all this yada 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 every goddamn day, all right, but they don't do much, they don't do shit about it, they think they do. But they don't do shit about it. But the fact that they uh, continuously are on there every day and claim they, you know, they want this, they don't, they want to stop them or whatever. And this guy Todd would tell us wants to try to fit in and oh, talk like a big game, talk a really huge game, all right. And the whole entire post. And I want all the sheep to think about this, whether you hate me or like me. To think about this, all this posts about trying to stop Christopher Mitchell's, somebody should do this, or we should do that, or how about this, everyone, everyone should do, you know, it's always some, he's always passing the buck on to somebody else, all right, his sheep, somebody should do this, somebody should do that, and that's why I got banned, because I called him out, because this whole Lee Bradbury thing, this whole Lee Bradbury thing is why I got banned from this forum because all the shit that's going on now, Todd would tell us, Todd would tell us, fucking had tried to, uh, said somebody should contact Demetrius from Christopher Mitchell's video on Facebook, all right? And I fucking um, jumped down. I was like, you fucking nuts, you retard, especially what Lee's going in. And only one person on that form, one person understood, all right? So again, this is how it all starts. But again, getting back to this, he's full of shit. He wants all the sheep. Somebody should do this. We should do that. How about this? Or da, da, da. All right. When in the background, he's wagering t attacks on my channel, all right? Trying to get my channel taken down. Trying to get strikes on my channel. He ain't do shit for Christopher Mitchell, all right? Claims he has this... Bay Area attorney, okay, and that he's gonna work on getting keeping up with the Mitchell's t uh, channel taken down. He's full of shit, as usual. We busted him in numerous lies, all right. So, again, he doesn't give a shit if you talk shit about him and you know dirt on him, he's gonna fucking his little mental, my, mental mind state, his screwed up mental mind state, sick in the head. This guy's so sick in the head, man. Really is. Really is. If you guys know everything that I know about him, holy shit. All right. And why I can't even divulge all the people that have come forward. I can't, I can't disclose that. All right. I can't disclose that. Just like Lee Barrett, Bradbury was so worried about his documents when he if he gave me those documents. All right. All right. So worried when he was full of shit. When we talked on the phone. And I gave him my word. I said, I wouldn't even think about doing that. But before I come forward, uh, we're, not, we're getting into that. So bottom line, everyone, in the fucking sheep form, your boy, Sheep Herder, is all about trying, and you guys can hate me all you want. Hey, try to get strikes and try to get my channel down. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> but you're living on a thread talking about Christopher Mitchell and me every day. Okay. And not one of you done anything to try to get keeping up with the Mitchell's channel down. Just think about that. 
With that said, let's dive into the, tonight's part two. As uh, we see right here, again, Christopher Mitchell still thinks I'm Lee Bradbury, um, calling out uh, every time he made a video or whatever. Um, that's defamation. Lee's too fuck much of a pussy to do anything about it. Now, before we dive into the second part of the interview, let's get into some more emails. Just so everybody, can, upon further review about what's going on in the background, because all these fucking pussies have been talking shit about me. Oh, hey, Kev, Kevin, no, he doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he fucked up Lee's court. Uh, uh, uh. Well, we all saw and caught Todd knew. Todd knew. I gave him five days. That was... And he knew, and he fucked all this shit. Da, 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 da. All right, again, another lie from the cyber stalking, cyber terrorist, fucking pussy. All right, so let's get into these emails. All right, continue on from the ones from yesterday, <clears throat> and I'll go over them really quick, and we're gonna get into that interview because it's gonna be. Uh, don't want this to be. Well, it's gonna be a long, uh, just as long. Uh, I'm in blue. Says right here, <clears throat> sent to Todd. Did Lee fill you in on yesterday what happened? And uh, Todd says, yeah, what a mess. Super unlucky and major injustice. I said, shoot me a call. He should have never done this alone. Um, right here. But between my personal life and that life and the life I choose and the life I chose to help others on YouTube, I can't hold people's hands. My guess is that he went in there as unprepared as a person could be. Um, Todd says, Kevin, I know you tried to help. I'm not blaming you. However, you, if you didn't do that live stream, which he knew I was doing, we, we all, he caught him. We, all, we knew what I was doing. He would have won. Okay. Oh, oh there he goes. And he, he they, that right there, he wants to not try to point fingers. He says no. Uh, he was on the verge of winning and seeing was almost held in contempt. We, this is all Lee's story. We don't know what happened in that judge's, uh, that courtroom. Then a court re employee got confused and thought your live stream was audio from the court. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, he said, this was way too many people in the hands of, in a situation, can't result, something all they mean. And let's keep going. And uh, the judge was an idiot, as was the court employee who brought this to him. I uh, I know what you were trying to do, what trying to prove, and it made sense. No shit, Sherlock. You knew five days, five days ago what I was doing. This should have been all. Hey, Lee, Kevin's gonna be. Kevin sent me a text. He's gonna be doing this live stream. So again, be prepared. If the if something happens or whatever, the judge just tell the judge. In fact, point it to the judge. You know that hey, he's doing this live stream. But it shouldn't have even got that way. Because you, as you saw prior to this, I was still willing to help. Even in these texts, you'll see I was still willing to help. And then right here, I said, oh, what the fuck ever. I made a point to prove there was too many, two different people. And that two-hour video was all based on it. I know, as I said, I don't blame me for a judge being dumb. Uh, Y'all can blame me all you want behind closed doors. But I didn't do shit to help him lose that case. I'm just saying that is why he lost. Yeah. Yeah, that's why he lost, all right? The live stream that fucking you, you knew about five days in advance and didn't tell him. Or the fact that I was willing to still come forward. No, but I'm not fucking dumb and guaranteed Lee does. I'm not blaming you. I'm, I'm pissed at the court, not you. He isn't either. I talked to him. He feels the same way I do. All right? How the fuck someone else blamed, blamed for something that I did? It's being appealed. Apparently, you don't want to talk, so so whatever. I don't do shit wrong. Uh, in fact, what I did should have solidified two different people, two different locations, and only one person doing it all. It says, I'm working with my summer now. Can't take a call, but I didn't say you did anything wrong. What you were trying to do made sense. Yeah, no shit. Again, fucking, <laughs> you knew well in advance. Um, I said, well, shoot me a call later. I even gave that idiot permission to have the judge call me again again this all this we're gonna get into part two all this should not even have gotten this far that interview the fucking the uh interview should have been t 10 times as long yesterday as lee's court fucking case because this should have been open you know i was willing to come forward 
says, we both know Lee should have never pissed me off, and he went in there unprepared. It should have been a slam dunk case, and doing, and uh, by doing what I did, should have been a final nail in the coffin. I was prepared. To, listen to this, guys. Again, this is all. I was prepared to send Judge's Chamber a shit ton of evidence that would have got CM in serious trouble with that court. And Lee having last laugh. Okay, I was willing to do it all, but I'm not fucking stupid. It's like, okay, I said, I, me and him talked about when he got served, those restraining order papers, I needed to see him so then I can get a copy so that I can take my legal, because it's fucking court. This is legal. So like, I can have a lawyer review what I should and what I shouldn't do and what I can and cannot divulge uh, to, but to uh, prove that it's me without getting me in trouble, all this other stuff, all right? So again, fuck all you guys and p pussies from America. Again, right here, I was already prepared to do that. And anybody, anybody in my uh, shoes would have done the same thing, okay? Would have done the same fucking thing, all right? So, let's see. I'm not saying he should have kissed my ass, but had some respect uh, for me. What's done is done, and because Vegas law enforcement court systems full of uncompetent retards, as was the Arkansas FBI, yada, yada, yada. And then, uh, let's see. I agree the court system sucks, and often law enforcement does too. I have also tried to handle things on myself rather than on the court system. Mm, kind of what you're doing behind the scenes at cyber stalking and cyber harassing all out of it, the uh, court's hands, but yet you're trying to, you, you make no sense to what you're doing behind the scenes. One minute we're going to court, and we're, you know, then fucking we're not going to go to court, but we are going to court. So whatever the case may be, uh, I've been online almost 35 years. Listen, look at, listen to what Todd's saying. I've been online for almost 35 years and had to deal with my share of being freaks. My share of freaks trying to screw it with me. Well, I have no ill, listen to this again, on June 3rd. Well, I have no ill will towards Lee. If I did, I wouldn't have reached out last night. However, let's be honest here. He should have immediately went to Henderson County Cops. He was like he was instructed to, yada, yada. He was then put on the, he was then put on the defense instead of being on the offense. Then he snapped at me, and which he shouldn't have never done, so he didn't deserve any of this at all, but he didn't do all the proper steps to help himself. So yeah, such big times and nobody else. And listen to this again. I'm not supposed to care about anybody and all this other shit yet. So yeah, says I hear. So yeah, it sucks big time, and nobody is more pissed than I am. But what's done is done, all right? And my plate is entirely full. What's CM's middle name? I believe it's Paul. Let me check, though, here in a few. Lee should know. Uh, why did you remove that video? That would have help, been helpful on the appeal. Can you restore it? Uh, Todd says. And uh, says, uh, the video's still up. Yeah, I got confused. I'm surprised he hasn't, hasn't made a video about it yet. Not sure the time, date, whatever. Uh, you still didn't delete Axel Wolf's comments. This is a guy from my forum who uh, got confused and made uh, some remarks about me, got confused, and then uh, wanted it removed. So, uh, let's see. And I said right here. Also, the story just isn't adding up that Lee uh, was about to win until I started live stream. I mean, think about that. Why would any judge think my live stream affected that case? When he's standing there in court. Anyways, I fell asleep, uh, but his middle name is Paul. It says right here, he, he said the judge got mad, confused, uh, audio, and was thinking he was making a uh, court, whatever. Again, should have all been, as you, you guys are getting to the point, should have never gotten this far. All right. And again, they, they've they been pointing the finger at me. That's all these pussies. Oh, this. And here's all the proof. Laying it all down. Still makes no sense. Um, whatsoever. To, to turn off your phones prior to court. Da, da, da. 
And uh, right here, it says Lee, I said Lee chose this to do on his own and walk in unprepared, facing a retarded judge, proving innocent people lose every day in court. That's not how it happened. You can't tell the judge to make calls. You can suggest it, but not force it. Lee showing his phone would have meant nothing. No doubt the judge screwed up. And uh, right here, um, I said right here, so CM told the judge that Lee is the owner of my channel. Right here, I said, if the judge thinks Lee runs my channel, again, this is on June 4th. If the judge thinks Lee runs my channel, then I need to... I need the judge's name and courthouse so I can send that idiot, the, referring to the judge, evidence to prove it's mine. Okay? So again, <laughs> I did everything to help, and we're gonna these these same emails are gonna loop through this entire video. If you guys want to read them and listen to that fucking blowhard. Let, whine about how he fucked up in court and all this other stuff, but at the very ending, at the very ending, you guys are gonna, it's gonna be even funnier, because Todd run, tries to do a fundraiser for Lee's court fucking call or lawyer. So again, um, uh, here's the part two of the video. Uh, enjoy. The, the the job thing actually was number the the second you know, concern of mine. One of my biggest concerns and immediate concerns was that now this judge thinks that I'm YouTube scam exposed and, and thinks that I'm Kevin Davis. And I, I know that Kevin Davis wasn't going to stop making videos about Christopher Mitchell. So now uh, that, you know, he has this restraining order against me and the, the judge believes that I'm YouTube scam exposed is the next video that Kevin Davis puts out of Christopher Mitchell, if, if Kevin Davis has somebody following Christopher Mitchell around again, all it takes is Christopher Mitchell to go back to the judge and say, hey, here's another video of where he's following me around. Right. And then the judge at that point in time could decide to arrest me based on breaking the restraining order. Yes, that that's, that is a big problem, too. And that's uh, – now, um, yes, it, after such a thing were to happen, then Lee could probably uh, sue the uh, the city – once he got arrested uh, for false arrest and once he could prove he's not a YouTube state exposer, he could possibly win money. And But still, who wants to go through all that? And also, there's no guarantee you'd win such a case. It is sometimes hard to bring uh, successful cases against a city like this. So uh, obviously, that was a real concern that now he was believed to be somebody else. And now whatever actions this someone else takes, including taking videos, uh, could he could have consequences for it, which, which is another problem. You always want to... Uh, you always want consequences only for your own actions to have to have consequences for a third party that you have no control over in another state. Uh, you, you don't want consequences for them action for their actions. And that is what uh, Lee was dealing with. Plus the employment situation. So when he told me about all this, I felt horrible for him as you probably do too, hearing this story. And uh, obviously my first thought was, is there a way to get this reversed? Is there a way to get this reviewed and i didn't know this because i had never looked into whether there is a way to reverse a restraining order so i googled it and i looked it up and of course it only matters to the state of nevada it doesn't matter how other states handle it but it turned out that yes in nevada there is a way to get uh, restraining orders appealed now when you appeal restraining orders the only thing that gets appealed is uh, if a mistake was made based upon the existing information at the time of the case if that would have if, if there was some mistake made that had it not been made would have changed the outcome well in this case yes there's a huge mistake made that they, they believe that there was audio of the courtroom that uh, um, that that somehow proved that he was uh, that he was Kevin Davis which number one that wouldn't prove it and number two there was no audio of the courtroom so uh, this was a huge mistake so yes this was a perfect thing for appeal See, like something you couldn't do on appeal is bring in new information that you hadn't presented the first time. They're, they would not allow that. But uh, it seemed to me that this was one that could easily win on appeal and that uh, the way the appeals process works there is uh, first the original judge. This goes back to him. And uh, and if you cannot get this uh, resolved through the original judge, you do have a right to have another judge hear it at that point. And uh, so that – so then – now, at this point, with a restraining order already against him, 
it's very clear that Lee could not afford to just go at it alone at this point, that he did need an attorney at this point. So, uh, so you went in and researched attorneys and what did you find? Yeah. So I hadn't even left the parking garage to the, the courthouse before, you know, I was looking up attorneys and so, uh, stuff to, to try to talk to. Um, I called around to several different attorneys and finally I landed on one that, uh, you know, could meet with me that day. Uh, it was going to be like two or three hours later, uh, which was which was fine because it gave me a little bit of time to go home and, and kind of put a timeline together to try to break down the story to this attorney to where I'm not wasting his time. And so I, I went home, put a timeline together. I, you know, put everything on my flash drive as far as all my evidence of, you know, him doxing me, all of my communication with Kevin Davis. and. You know, I, I met with my attorney a few hours later. Um, he was actually, so I really, you know, one of the th things that I really liked about this attorney is, you know, there, it wasn't a free consultation, but he basically heard my entire story before he even talked about money. Um, you know, he didn't say, hey, like your consultation is $75 or $100. I need that money before I even talk to you. So he, he sat down and talked to me for about two hours. And he was completely shocked at the story um, when I, you know, had told him that there was absolutely uh, no evidence presented in the courtroom. He was really shocked. He was really convinced that this would be an easy shut and close, you know, uh, open shut case for an appeal and, uh, you know, decided that he would take my case. Uh, he did inform me at that point, you know, uh, he informed me beforehand that it was going to be $15 to retain him. But that would include, you know, it wouldn't be. Wait, wait, hold, hold on a second. You, you said fifteen dollars to to retain him. Fifteen hundred. Okay, fifteen hundred dollars to retain him. Fifteen, that'd be a good deal. I would have snap taken that one. <laughs> that was uh, fifteen hundred dollars to retain him, but it wasn't going to be like a, you know, he wasn't going to charge me like a uh, an hourly, like three hundred or four hundred dollars an hour. You know, he agreed to take on the case for fifteen hundred dollars, no additional charges or anything like that thought it was going to be an easy open shut case. So as I'm, so I was in his office for the, the majority of the time. And then after I spoke with him for about an hour and a half, two hours, we're out in the lobby. He's having his, you know, admin or paralegal or whatever, take my uh, card information to pay him. And there was another attorney that had walked by. And this is where things kind of just get kind of unreal is so the, this other attorney walks by and he kind of looks at me. I kind of look at him. I, I think that he kind of looks familiar and he kind of looked at me like he knew me. And then I, it, it clicked that I saw this attorney in the same courtroom that I was in with Christopher Mitchell. And he was there for a different case after mine and was just sitting in the courtroom listening to my case. Yeah. So that's very fortunate that it had just by sheer coincidence, a lot of coincidences here that the, that the whole weird thing with, with Kevin Davis happened that they happened to look it up at the time when that was on there and they, they were misled into believing that it was, uh, that, that it was the audio of the courtroom. But then the, the, a good coincidence finally that the attorney he happened to choose had uh, an associate there that happened to be in court and witnessed this whole thing go down. So that, yeah. that was very helpful. When I had told, you know, my, my attorney, all the ridiculous of him not presenting evidence and him almost getting arrested in court, you know, and I didn't blame my attorney for this, but I kind of got the impression that the attorney kind of thought that I was just over exaggerating of things that happened in the court. And when his partner attorney told him, you know, he's like, yeah, I was in that court. That was the most, you know, he's like, I've been practicing years, uh, law for 10 plus years. And that's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in a courtroom. And he's like, the, the judge was about ready to arrest this guy. Then all of a sudden, uh, you know, he turns and, and starts in on, you know, on him. And so that attorney said that the case was so ridiculous that him and the marshal was actually talking about my case, like after the fact, and both him and my marshal and the marshal was uh, the understanding that my wife had to have snuck in somehow and got the recording. And that's kind of what they were going with is that, you know, it must've been my wife um, because the marshal even said, like I had his phone, his phone wasn't, it didn't look to be on recording and the judge had just had his phone 
less yeah. than five minutes prior. And it wasn't his wife. Like this, this never happened. You guys understand it was Kevin Davis putting that up with that misleading title. But but anyway, uh, so it, it was fortunate though that at least they had uh, an attorney there in that same firm that had seen it all go down and was able to just go right from there. It didn't have to be a description or maybe this didn't really happen the way he said. And they, they had an attorney that could come right there and say, yeah, I was right here when this all happened. And let me tell you where, where the mistake was. So that was very fortunate that that coincidence occurred. He did not know this when he went to go hire these attorneys. So let, let's fast forward a bit. Since there's more to the story, you guys. Here. So let's fast forward a bit to, well, let, let's, let's get to the point where, where there was a hearing and Christopher had, had claimed that he, that he didn't know about it. Well, yeah. So, okay. So fast forward, uh, with COVID going on, and plus, you know, the court proceedings is very slow in general, plus COVID-19 doesn't make it any easier. Uh, fast forward, it was like four or five weeks later was my next uh, court appearance. I show up, my attorney shows up, and then they find out that the courts actually never served Christopher Mitchell at all. So <laughs> Christopher Mitchell had no idea about the court proceedings that were going to be happening in July. So they decided to... Uh, postponed the the court hearing and they set it again for like four or five weeks later. Great. And at that point in time, it was uh, the the court made it my attorney's office responsibility to serve Christopher Mitchell. So fast forward again, uh, four or five weeks later, um, you know, I'm in contact with my attorney's office. They're telling me like, look, you know, we've tried to uh, have Christopher Mitchell served. Uh, it was like 12 or 13 times. Uh, the process server, you know, had documented each individual time that he had tried, including, you know, on three or four different occasions, the process server had made it very clear that, you know, he could hear or see movement inside the home and still wasn't getting any kind of response. Plus, you know, he was leaving, uh, you know, some kind of sticky notes or something on the garage or on the door and that they were being removed each time. But uh, he was unable to uh, serve Christopher Mitchell. Plus, my attorney's office had mailed something to Christopher Mitchell's address as well. So, uh, you know, fast forward to ultimately my third court hearing. Uh, I'd spoke with my attorney the day before and the morning of. And he was like, look, he's like, you know, uh, unfortunately, our process server hasn't been able to serve Christopher Mitchell. I'm going to go in here and talk to the judge. Uh, one other kind of perfect, uh, one other thing important to note is the second court hearing where Christopher Mitchell didn't show up because he actually really didn't know about the court hearing is uh, my attorney actually got to speak with the judge. And the judge had uh, admitted to my attorney that he never actually heard any audio whatsoever on the YouTube uh, channel. Wow. That he was actually taking his clerk's word for it and was still upset, basically claiming that um, I was calling his clerk a liar. <laughs> and I, I was. Because he was wrong, yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know, that, that he was basically pissed off at me because, you know, I'm claiming that his clerk's a liar and, you know, he's going to take his clerk's word over mine and that, you know, he basically still believed that I was the YouTube, you know, responsible for the YouTube scammer exposed page. Um, so anyway, uh, that, that was on the, the hearing where Christopher Mitchell didn't show up and that he really had no idea that was going on. So then like uh, four or five weeks later, we go into court that morning and my attorney was like, look, you know, we weren't able to serve him, but we did make multiple attempts. He's like, so I'm going to go in and talk to the judge and say, look, you know, we made multiple attempts. There was no evidence presented other than, you know, you, the, the, the YouTube channel or whatever, but there was no actual evidence presented by the, you know, the, the plaintiff. Can we just get rid of this? And so uh, he goes and he, he somehow talks to the judge and he comes back and he tells me, he's like, okay, the judge is going to dismiss this. Um, he's going to, he's going to go ahead and reverse it. So we, we have to go in the courtroom. He, do, he still doesn't want to talk to you. He's, he still doesn't like you, <laughs> but you know, we got to go into the courtroom 
he's got to get up on the bench and basically say that this is dismissed. So he's like, so when we go in there, don't say a word. So we go in, into the courtroom. Uh, I'm standing there with my uh, my attorneys at this point in time. The original attorney that I hired was there, plus the attorney that had got to witness everything firsthand. Uh, the first trial or the, the first court hearing was there. And, uh, you know, they started, you know, talking to the judge. And next thing you know, the marshal comes in and says, Your Honor, Christopher Mitchell is actually here. <laughs> Another, another another late appearance at the last second. So, uh, again, you know, Christopher Mitchell at this point in time was late. And they bring him in. The judge asked him, you know, how uh, he knew about the court hearing if he was never served. He claimed that he had just got something in the mail the day before. Yeah, right. And that... You know, he only had, you know, he had less than 24 hours to prepare for this because he hadn't been served. And so uh, basically the judge kind of saw right through that, you know, the the judge definitely wasn't a fan of Christopher Mitchell, regardless of his feelings towards me. Right. He was already pissed at him and almost about to put him in jail. So, yeah, he didn't like him either. Now, Now, I will give Christopher Mitchell credit this time. He showed up in a suit. Oh, good, good. And and not a sweatsuit. Just just a regular suit. So anyway, uh, the judge, you know, is, is basically pulling his hair out at this point in time. Like he's got Christopher Mitchell, who he thinks is a fucking idiot. He's got me who thinks that, uh, you know, I'm a liar and that I've disrespected him in his courtroom. And he's basically just ready to be done with this. And, you know, he's telling Christopher Mitchell, he's like, okay, do you have any kind of evidence uh, pre- to, to be able to present to me? for me not to reverse this, this restraining order. And at this point in time, Christopher Mitchell is like, your honor. Yes, I do. Um, uh, you know, I have evidence. He, he was like, I was at the cosmopolitan and I received a phone call from a friend who told me that, uh, YouTube scammer exposed was, was having a live video following me around the cosmopolitan. And, He's like, so I, I went to the, the YouTube scam exposed uh, YouTube channel. And, and unfortunately, the channel was the, the video was already deleted before I could actually see it. But, you know, if you look at his wife's Facebook profile, she has a picture of her at the Cosmopolitan. Yeah, like, like that proves anything. Like, oh, my God, somebody in Las Vegas actually their, their wife was at the Cosmopolitan. That's that pr- that proves he was stalking Christopher at the Cosmopolitan because there's no reason to go to the Cosmopolitan other than to stalk Christopher Mitchell, of course. But so at this point in time, so the judge was like, OK, so you saw a video, but you have no proof. And he's like, no, 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 I have proof of the video. I have video evidence that he was stalking. me. And so the, the judge, he's like, OK, let me see it. And then the judge the judge paused and he was like, actually, he's like, we're going to take a quick recess. He's like, his attorneys should have the chance to see this evidence before it's presented to the court. And so he's like, we're going to take a a quick 10 minute recess. And Christopher Mitch, he's like, uh, you know, Mr. Bradbury is going to go out in the hallway. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, you're going to actually go into this room with his attorneys and you're going to, present the evidence to his attorney and let the attorney see this video. So I go out to the hallway. My attorneys go into the office, uh, into like a little back room or whatever. And, uh, you know, a few minutes later, the, uh, the attorney that was present for the first hearing comes out and he's like, Hey man, I just want to let you know, you need to cut this shit out. And, and this is kind of where I got annoyed with, with this attorney. Is like He's like, you just need to cut this shit out. I was like, cut what out, man? I'm not doing anything. And he's like, look. He's like, I don't know if you are if you are or aren't, but why do you care about this guy? I was like, I don't care about this guy. <laughs> shit. 
And I mean, this is so like, frustrating. Before you continue, this is so frustrating because this is so easy and simple. It, like this is what I don't get. Okay, it's it's one thing if uh, if there's uh, an idiot who brings a frivolous case against you. It's one thing if one person gets confused about something and makes the wrong decision. But this is like a big chain. Now he's got his own attorneys believing. Okay, maybe there maybe there is something going on here. Maybe uh, maybe Lee is harassing him. It's it's very simple. It's open and shut. You take a look at it. You can see obviously the, that that there's no proof or not even any indication that Lee is the same person. You can hear its different voices. You can hear the you can clearly see that Christopher's full of crap. You can clearly see that everything that Christopher's been saying about the whole thing isn't true. And uh, and and everything that Christopher claims he has as, quote, evidence really isn't. Anyone with the slightest bit of common sense could see what the truth is here. And it's amazing that even his attorneys were getting confused by this and thinking, OK, maybe these guys are both screwing with each other. And this this can tend to happen when you have people who aren't critical thinkers, when you have people who may be book smart, but they don't have the ability to just stop and take something apart and look at it logically and critically and not just go, ah, uh, you know, both of these people are kind of acting weird. I bet they're both I bet they're both guilty of something like a, that. That's what was going on here. And it was so unfair because and, every bit of evidence pointed uh, to the truth, which people were were ignoring here now. You know, uh, again, admittedly, my wife actually did have a picture as her Facebook profile of her standing in front of the chandelier bar at the Cosmopolitan, if you're familiar with that. Yeah, but so does everybody. And, you know who has that same picture? Uh, Danielle Burreal. Danielle Burreal, who, who uh, is the, the head of WSOP.com. Does that mean she was stalking Christopher Mitchell? I mean, that's that's an iconic place in Cosmopolitan, which is one of the biggest and best-known casinos in Vegas. So to, to even – that it's insulting to try to claim that – the guy's wife having a picture in front of an iconic uh, a chandelier in Vegas is somehow proof of stalking. I mean, that's just it's just I mean, even a five year old could figure out how that doesn't make any sense. Right. And and not that I felt like I'd be to defend myself, you know, to you. But, you know, I'm telling my attorney, I was like, look, I was like, I so my wife and I, we as a as a married couple, we had our first drink as a married couple at the Cosmopolitan. So now every year on our anniversary, we go to the Cosmopolitan to have a drink. It's kind of just a tradition. So, and our anniversary is in June. So, uh, you know, it was actually a couple of weeks after my first case with Christopher Mitchell when I when I actually did have the restraining order against me uh, that I went to the Cosmopolitan, not because I was looking for him, just because you know we. Actually, we're going there for a drink. I had some friends from out of town that were actually in town. And I, I showed my attorney. I was like, look, I was like, I have a text message conversation with a friend that shows, hey, do you want to go to, the, you know, do you want to go out to eat? Yeah, sure. Where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. Me and my wife is going to go to the Cosmopolitan first to have a drink. And then we can go anywhere from there. So I, I show my attorney this. You know, he's like, whatever, like, just <laughs> – Stop with this guy. Like, if you're doing something, stop. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. And he's like, okay, whatever. So he goes back in. A few minutes pass, and eventually they bring me back into the courtroom. Uh, the judge gets back up on the bench, and he goes, okay, guys, uh, did you have a, a enough time to review the evidence uh, that he has against you know the defendant? And my attorney speaks up, and he's like, no, Your Honor. Um, yeah, there is no evidence. There was no video. And the, the judge kind of like pauses a little bit. And he's like, what do you mean there's no video? And uh, the, the attorney, now at this point in time, uh, my actual attorney, the one that I hired, uh, had another case in a different court that he had to go to. And so he asked me if it was okay if I let his partner who was familiar with the case take over at that point in time for that hearing. I said, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. So at this point in time, it's only, uh, the other attorney, his name is Roy. So, uh, so Roy is, you know, saying, you know, your honor, there, there was no evidence. He brought us in there. He wanted to show us pictures when we kept pressing for the video that he claims that he had of, you know, our client following him around the cosmopolitan uh, he could have presented, um, you know, he can't tell the date that, you know, our client was following him around. All he has is a picture of him, you know, his wife at the cosmopolitan on a Facebook profile, which proves nothing. So your honor, again, he has not shown us any proof. And so the, the judge stunned by all this goes to Christopher and he's like, 
I thought you said that you have video evidence of him stalking you. And Christopher Mitchell's like, no, I never said that. I never said that. that <laughs> he tells the judge, you know, I have evidence. The judge is like, okay, show it to his attorneys. Okay, what? I never said I had any evidence. The judge is like, am I in the freaking Twilight Zone? What the hell is going on here? The, the judge says, we went on a recess solely because you said that there was a video that you need to show his attorney. And so they go back and forth. The judge, you know, makes the claim, you two are meant for each other. You guys are both out there, basically. <laughs> and at this point in time, like, I, during this trial, I actually never spoke to the judge one time. I never actually spoke in court at all. Yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, at this point in time, uh, this attorney uh, made a statement that he didn't talk to me about beforehand. Uh, I didn't really approve of. I actually wasn't very happy with it. Um, you know, he kind of later explained himself after the fact, but he said, you know, your honor, you know, clearly my defendant has made a, a mistake, but that mistake doesn't prove that he is actually stalking Mr. Mitchell. And still to this day, Mr. Mitchell has not been able to present any evidence whatsoever that our client is stalking him. And for that reason, we asked for this case to be dismissed. Yeah, which which is basically saying, yes, okay, my, without directly saying it, okay, my, my client did record the card room, but that doesn't mean that he didn't do it, which is crazy because that's not true, and nor did Lee ever tell him it was true. It's not like Lee said it to the attorney who said, please don't present this in court. Lee has been insisting the entire time, I didn't do it. My wife didn't do it. I have no idea what they're talking about. And then the, the attorney just goes rogue and says this. Uh, and and uh, and so your attorney said to you later that that he uh, he used that strategy because he felt the judge was not going to change his mind. So this would be the best thing to to kind of get the judge past it. Yeah. So so first of all, he chose his words very carefully. He never said my my client, you know, made a big mistake by recording the the courtroom. Yeah, he just he said never, he made a big mistake. Yeah. He, he never. He just said that I made a big mistake. He didn't say what that big mistake was, and he felt that, you know, uh, being sympathetic and apologetic to the judge would get a lot further than continuing to basically say, we think that you're lying, you didn't hear what you th thought you heard. And so, uh, so anyway, the, the judge at this point in time was like, okay, well, you know, based on everything here, um, <laughs> He even said, you know, I can't believe that this is in my courtroom a second time. <laughs> I'm I can't going either. to go ahead and reverse the uh, the temporary restraining order or temporary protection order, TPO. Um, Christopher Mitchell, do you have any objection to this? And, of course, you know, uh, now this is like fast forward like 10 to 15 minutes or whatever maybe 10 minutes so christopher mitchell's like yeah i have objection to this he's stalking me he's you know making threats against me and my wife and my child blah 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 the judge goes well you know unless you're able to provide me some proof of you know this happening unfortunately you know i'm gonna have to reverse this and then christopher's like i got proof i got a video <laughs> <laughs> and so the the judge goes now you got a video again. And he's like, yeah, I have a video of him uh, of recording me in a California casino. And the judge said, you know, is this before or after our June court date? And Christopher was like, oh, I don't know the exact date. I'll have to look it up. So the judge gives him a chance to look it up. This, this should have been dismissed a long time ago. I mean, even with the first mistake of, of granting it. Just the second that Christopher went back there and then failed to show him what 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 he promised he was going to show, every judge in the world would have been justified to say, you know what, this is ridiculous. You had your chance to show the evidence. You wouldn't show it to the opposing attorneys. I'm dismissing it. That that's what I would have done immediately if I were judge. This is crazy. He gave him a second chance. So the uh, the judge, you know, gives him a chance to look at the video. Uh, at that point in time. Uh, Christopher Mitchell says that the video of the California casino happened prior to our first court date. And the judge goes, well, you know, that's nothing, you know, there wasn't a restraining order prior to that court date. So unfortunately I, you know, there's no punishment there. Um, so unless you can provide some new evidence, uh, 
there's nothing to, to hold this you know restraining order on, and I'm going to reverse it. So we're going to go ahead and reverse this. He's like, now what I will say uh, is he said that he's going to put a one year uh, no contact order. And what he explained that the court, no contact order was is it's basically off the books. And it's basically the judge just telling both of us to leave each other alone. The judge said, you know, uh, he, so the, the judge actually said, you know, in six months, we're going to come back and uh, kind of do like a follow-up to make sure that you guys are both leaving each other alone. But uh, basically he said within that six months, the one year time frame, if either of us had an issue with each other as far as like following each other around, then we could file something back into the court and he would hear a case and, and decide to put the restraining order back in place. So that's actually where I stand now. Um, I do have a, another court hearing, uh, the beginning of 2021, not sure of the exact date, but, uh, I do have another court hearing that the judge is going to, I assume have us back in or maybe just talk to the attorney to see, you know, if there's been anything more going on. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I still have not tried to contact him. I have no intentions of contacting him. I've not been in contact with Kevin Davis. And honestly, like I've, I've distanced myself from this because it's just, you know, where, where I found it a little interesting at the beginning, it, became just such a headache. No, it was a huge nightmare, this whole thing. I, I don't blame you. You weren't that invested in this in the first place, and somehow you got roped into to this bogus restraining order being, uh, and, and then what, actually being granted through those crazy circumstances, and then it was actually even more difficult to, to win on appeal than it appeared it would be. Now, so there, there's good and bad news I want to tell everybody here for the, the whole situation regarding his costs for the, for the appeal, you know, because, of course, he had to hire an attorney at that point. The good news is that uh, for a lot of work is being done for this fifteen hundred dollars that he spent, which is a flat fee, and and until the matter is concluded, either for or against him, until it's actually concluded, uh, that's all covered in that same flat fee. So uh, I I'm pretty sure when his attorneys took this, they had no idea how long this was going to drag because it seemed open and shut. It was just all this weirdness that, that even followed there. That it uh, that there's more work that they've had to do for this than probably they expected, but nevertheless, that's what they agreed to, and that's it, it's not going to cost him any anything further until this is uh, until this is done. So that's that's the good news is it's not going to be running up further uh, attorneys' fees. The bad news is he's out fifteen hundred dollars for something that absolutely was not his fault because he should have won. Remember, he represented himself at the beginning. And rightfully so, because this is so outrageous, and just there, there was no way that Christopher Mitchell was going to be able to satisfy the burden of proof to show that he was Kevin Davis, to show that Lee was Kevin Davis, because he wasn't, and there's no nothing indication he no, no indication he was other than in, in Christopher's head. So um, this seemed super easy to beat on his own, and through that weird thing that happened with Kevin Davis's video, he ended up with a totally unfair restraining order against him, at which point, of course, he had to go get attorney. So he's out $1,500 basically because he tried to go protect an old man that uh, he thought might be receptive to seeing and hearing evidence that Christopher Mitchell's winning Baccarat system was not at all what it appeared to be and was actually a scam. And that uh, thanks to that attempt, which was his right to do, you can contact, for those of you that don't know, most of you probably know, but... You have a right to contact anyone at any time for any reason, um, provided you don't break the law while you're contacting them. Some people believe that you don't have a right to contact someone's friend or someone's family. You do. It, it may be an asshole thing to do in certain cases, like if you have a problem with someone to harass their mom. That, that's an asshole thing to do. Um, e even calling that person's mom and, and trying to get her involved, that could be kind of uh, – an asshole thing to do, but it's not illegal. There's nothing. You have a right to contact anyone at any time, especially if they have not yet told you to stop contacting them. Once they say stop contacting me and you continue to, then the person could, uh, could claim you're harassing them. But an initial contact with anyone, especially done respectfully and without any kind of threats, which is what he did with Bob Hesley. With Bob Hesley, he, he was trying to help. He tried to go, hey, the, let, me, let me help you. Let me show you that the coaching you're about to buy is bogus. Let me show you some evidence the coaching you're about to buy is bogus. I don't want to see you get cheated, Bob. That, that's what he was saying. 
And uh, so th- there was no harassment. It's not like he showed up to Bob and started uh, attacking him or threatening him. You better not come down there. Or I'm going to do this to you. He was trying to say, don't do it. You're, that's my advice to you. And here's some evidence that what I'm telling you is correct. That is totally within his legal rights to do. And it was actually something that was uh, morally good because he was trying to protect an old guy from getting scammed. And look at what he had to go through because of this. So for that reason, and, and I, I wouldn't do this lightly, and I've never done it before on this show. But uh, and I suggested this, by the way, he did. He did not ask this. I I suggested this uh, early on, but we said we're not going to do this until he can actually come on and tell the story, because it it wouldn't have made sense to do if we can't tell you the story. That wouldn't be fair. But I said, I am going to see if radio listeners here want to help Lee pay for the uh, attorney's fees that he had to. uh, You know, it's just money out the window, fifteen hundred dollars, which could have been worse, but it ended up being fifteen hundred dollars. That uh, that are out of his pocket, and he, as he said, he's not a rich guy. He's he's not uh, dirt poor, but this this is someone who where the money is is definitely meaningful, and uh, and and it sucks to have to waste the money on this. Forget all the stress and the time and all this, which you'll never get back. But uh, but at least the monetary portion. I said, you know what? If I'm going to tell the story, we'll tell the story out here, and I'll see if any listeners want to donate to this cause, and uh, and if if even if we can't raise the the whole fifteen hundred. Uh, at least it'll defray some of the costs. At least it will will, will uh, bring his out of pocket costs down. So uh, so if you if you want to donate to a good cause, and this really is, and I can tell you, I've been following this the whole way. He didn't just tell me this story yesterday. I've been following it the whole way. It, it's got it got me mad to hear as it went on. It, it got me mad to know that Lee did nothing to deserve this. It's not even like Lee heard what Christopher was doing and said, you know what? I'm going to fuck with Christopher Mitchell because he's a piece of shit. I'm going to fuck with him. I'm going to harass him. I'm going to stalk him because he deserves it. And then Lee got in some kind of trouble. Well, then you could say, even if you think Christopher deserves it, Lee still knowingly broke the law. But that's not what happened here. Lee did not break any laws. Lee went to go warn someone, and that's all he did. He warned someone with the truth, with links to the truth to go read on this site, PokerFraudAlert.com. And for that, he got a restraining order placed against him based upon bogus pretenses that he was this other individual, Kevin Davis, who doesn't even live on the in the western U.S. Kevin Davis lives on the East Coast. That uh, he, he had to go through all this and is out $1,500 too. It's, it's horrible. So I, I felt so bad for him. I so badly wanted him to win this. I was at least somewhat happy when he got the restraining order reversed because now there is no actual restraining order against him on his record. If there's a background check done, this will not show up now. And if... Uh, and also, if if Kevin Davis does future videos where there's where there where he does get someone to record Christopher, then uh, Lee is not responsible for it in any way, which of course is very important because who knows what Kevin Davis is going to do? He always wants to make uh, Christopher Mitchell look bad and expose him. So, um, and I'm not saying even Kevin Davis is wrong to do this. Like if, if Kevin Davis is exposing things that Christopher's doing that uh, is dishonest and is warning people, then that's fine. I don't even see anything. Like uh, by the way, recording someone in public is not necessarily a crime either, or, that, or nor does it mean you're stalking them. I mean, there's people who post videos all the time that go viral of being, someone being recorded. So if, if you record someone out in public doing something bad, that doesn't make you a stalker. A stalking is, is, is much more... Uh, it's not super well-defined, but it's much, much more than that. It's where basically somebody is, is following you around from place to place and, and uh, uh, frequently harassing you in person or making electronic or or threats over the telephone you know they're, they're, where they're either harassing you online in a way with through direct contact or following you or your family to harass you through direct contact not not that you happen to see someone at the casino engaging in wrongdoing and record them that's not even stalking by the way that's uh um so so that even that wouldn't be stalking but he wasn't even doing that again this was kevin kevin had somebody who saw christopher at sequan and, and, and recorded him and they put it on the channel again that's legal too Sikwan asked him not to do it, and the guy stopped, but uh, but that was not illegal either. So anyway, and this had nothing to do with Lee. This is all stuff that Kevin and his friend did. This has nothing to do with Lee. So this this is a real miscarriage of justice. It's a very frustrating thing he went through here. So if, 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 there is a, if you'd like to donate, and it, it can be any amount, and by the way, you may say, well, how do we know that he really spent $1,500? Uh, well, I will verify before I, I – the money will be donated to me, and I will be the one distributing it. I will not distribute a penny to Lee. Until I am convinced, and, and I, I believe it, by the way. It's not like I have any doubts. But uh, Lee will, will send me proof that he actually paid the $1,500 to the attorney. 
And once I'm satisfied with that proof that he paid $1,500 to the attorney, uh, then I will send him whatever I receive. And uh, if I re- and I will not take more than $1,500. If we get to $1,500, it's going to stop. It's not going to be like these GoFundMe campaigns where someone uh, has a, a sob story out there and they say, oh, I'm out to $1,000, and then they end up getting uh, – it goes viral and they get 100000 and they made 99000 out of it. Lee's not going to make any money here. Once we get to $1,500, i am going to tell everybody – Thanks, but no thanks. Uh, I'm not taking another penny because we reached 1,500. So, so at best, he's going to break even in this whole thing, which he won't break even because it'll be the the time and the stress of this whole thing. And there you have it. So let's make a quick recap since this video is already long. In summary, these guys have been talking shit, complaining. They whined for over two hours, a two-hour interview, whining and all this. Poor me, poor Lee. He went through all this, all this trouble and heartache and wah, wah, wah. And then they had a donation, a donation at the end of the video to pay for this when it all should have never happened in the first place. Lee's court should have went in less than 15 minutes. I gave him the opportunity, gave him the opportunity I'd come forward. And they were all worried. Even after the phone call, I called him. I said I wouldn't give you my word because I fucking retarded to give to videotape it, okay? But in order for me to help you, I'm not walking into a lion's den without being prepared. I want to see what's being served. I would want to have, have my lawyers review it. I would like to know exactly what I can and cannot say that will might incriminate me. And guess what, Lee? You would have been gone. You would have been scot free. All right, woo! But no, you ran your mouth, you pissed me off, and all this other shit. And even after, even after, it's already we already went over this, so I'm going to make it quick. Even after all that, I still gave you the chance the night before, or the day before, that the judge could still text me. I warned Todd. Five days, he knew, he knew about the live stream. The big, the infamous live stream that caused all your problems, as you say. He knew. He could have warned you. Okay, and you could have fucking uh, took action right there. Nothing happened. So bottom line is, again, Christopher Mitchell still delusional, scary delusional. Still thinks I'm Lee Bradbury. Again, Todd Whitlet Whitellis is totally exposed again for being a lying sack of piece of shit cyber stalker he is. And well, Lee got what he uh, kind of deserved. Uh, not really deserved. I, uh, I'll retract that and apologize. But don't complain when it could have been prevented. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. Stay tuned for the next video. You're not going to want to miss it.